Part four of our classification of marine life series is uh, dealing with the higher vertebrates. Take a look at that leatherback turtle. That is the largest sea turtle that we have now. They nest on the other coast, Jacksonville Beach and around uh, the uh, North Florida. They can grow 10 to 12 feet long. I was fortunate enough to see one in the Gulf uh, on, on our, our coast uh, feeding, but they do uh, not reproduce on, on our, our beaches. The sea turtles that reproduce on our beaches are the leatherback, not the leatherback, that's the leatherback, <laughs> the loggerhead, the leatherback sea turtle. Take a look at that, uh, that doesn't have scoots, hard scales, it has flexible accordion-like shell because it's a deep diver and it handles pressure changes quite well. We'll start off with the reptiles. The reptiles are famous for the amniotic egg. They are the first taxa to present the egg, which allows for reproduction without water. Uh, so that's it. It's a shell. It allows air to flow in and out. Oxygen uh, keeps it moist because of the uh, amniotic sac and fluid and allows uh, animals to uh, venture out further and further into land. Scales develop the feathers and hair, eggs uh, and, and the amnion develop internally. So reptiles uh, represent a step in vertebrate evolution, which led to birds and mammals. The saltwater crocodiles are the largest living reptiles. Uh, 28.3 is the largest confirmed estuary salty. Uh, they do eat people sometimes and uh, they're very aggressive. The sea snakes and sea crates, sea snakes internalize their eggs, sea crates uh, turn to land and uh, lay their eggs are relatives of the cobra that uh, they're very ven venomous uh, but they're shy uh, they, so they, they don't really attack humans they're vulnerable to getting eaten by sharks because they don't really have the natural defense so there's old steve Irwin, and he's handling the sea crates they're venomous again like a cobra but they don't have fangs they have rear teeth where you know they could deliver a bite and uh you know, poison a fish, but uh, they, they, they can't really get the human because they're rear fangs. They don't have the front uh, viper-like fangs. Marine iguanas uh, were castaways originally from Ecuador, that uh, current that uh, goes on the trade winds down the equator. Uh, the storms blow off of Ecuador and blow trees and debris and organisms. And that current goes right by the Galapagos where trees maroon sea creatures. Uh, over the generations, they diverged through diversion evolution. And we have a unique species of marine iguana living on the Galapagos. They are adapted to eat algae off of rocks. So they're the only marine lizard. Charles Darwin, Use this as one of his natural selection. Uh, of course, his quote showed the ignorance of the time. Although he's regarded as a great mind, he still showed some ignorance of the time. Uh, written in, his, uh, he wrote about them. The black lava rocks on the beach are frequented by large, disgusting, clumsy liver lizards. They are black as the porous rocks over which they crawl and seek their prey from the sea. Oh. Yeah, well, seek the algae, pray from the sea, sure. I call them imps of darkness. They assuredly will become the land they inhabit. So there's a lot of uh, hooey in that statement, but uh, they are adapted to life on the rocks, eating algae. Sea turtles, and I got lucky enough. This is a, a funny, uh, I took this uh, picture in Fort Lauderdale. This was back before digital cameras were a thing, so that's on um, film. 
and I take it to the uh, CVS probably to have the, the developed and I come back a couple days later and they have all these beautiful posters uh, in the CVS hanging up in their uh, photography section. Oh, those are beautiful posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pick up my film and I, I'm looking at my pictures and the posters were my pictures. They made all these posters up out of all these pictures that I uh, did off of my dive trip. I was shocked. I've had a few of my pictures published in the St. Pete Times, so I I used to be a half decent uh, amateur photographer uh, underwater with strobes and stuff. It was uh, you know pre pre kids, so I, I had money, but uh, that was uh, decades ago. But this uh, this uh, was one of those I got lucky moments. Uh, so there's the Sargasso Sea. We mentioned how it's the uh, equatorial current, Gulf Stream, North Atlantic. Canary current and the, the loop currents also involved. You can see the loop current going through and the huge algal mats ride these currents and then the sea turtles swim to the weed line as juveniles and spend their formative years in these weed mats circling the ocean eight, nine, 12 years, just depending on where they hop on the current. And uh, so they're called the lost years of the sea turtle. Uh, so they do migrate, they migrate around the, uh, on, on the, uh, weed line and then they return to their natal beaches. Uh, eggs take 50 to 80, depending on the species. The temperature of the, uh, the temperature of the sand determined sex, same way it does in, in, in alligators, uh, anywhere from 60 to a hundred eggs are laid. Sexual maturity generally takes 20 years, so it, it you know when you do restoration projects or protection, it's kind of tough to uh, to monitor these things because they take so long to uh, to to accomplish generations. Uh, the flippers they cannot retract them, so they're often uh, eaten by sharks. The uh, male has the long tail; it's where the uh, the sexual organs are actually in the tail of these sea turtles. So when they mate, the smaller male with the long tail, uh, they, they do have the uh, intercourse. The skull pictured there has uh, keratin that is from the loggerheads used to crunch on the shells. Others like the green sea turtle, uh, they eat the turtle grass so they have a totally different beak system. Uh, so it just depends on the species the head, the mouth, the musculature. Turtles it got, secrete salt, get rid of salt from their uh, eyes. They have glands in their eyes. When they pull ashore, they keep exuding the salt and it's called turtle tears. And legend had it, the females were crying because they'd never see their babies again. But in reality, it's an advantage because it keeps sand from their eyes, but it's how they get rid of salt. They're always, always, always uh, getting rid of salt through glands in their eyes. Remember, way back in the ecology, osmoregulation is super important. So the species, the specifics we have, uh, giant leather back in that picture again, nesting uh, other coast. Uh, the green sea turtle, Named after his green meat because it eats, uh, it eats um, seagrass, seagrass. So it was hunted. It's tasty, I guess. I've never had this particular turtle, uh, and it's protected now. Protected. Hawksbill turtle was hunted for its prettiness because they make guitar picks and hair ties or berets or something out of them. Uh, tortoise shell jewelry. Uh, so the hawk's bill, it's small. It's got a little beak. They eat sponges and squid and shrimp. It's got a little sharp beak. It doesn't have that big crushing one. Um, they're, they're, they're really the, um, the looker of the crew with that pretty pattern on their, their shells. The Kemp's Ridley is the smallest and uh, they nest during the day, mass nesting. Their eggs are believed to be an aphrodisiac, so they're poached and sold on the black market. 
They only nest in a couple of places, one in Rancho Nuevo, Mexico, and humans have tried to get them to colonize San Padre Island in Texas. Uh, it's called Kemp's Ridley because a scientist named Kemp discovered where they um, they nested because uh, you know they they didn't really know much about their life cycle. So Kemp solved the riddle, Kemp's Ridley turtle. The leatherback is is the big deep diving eating jellyfish, uh, flexible shell. Um, they're the ones that are impacted most by the plastic because bags look like jellyfish and they eat the bags and then it binds them and, and then they die uh, from blockages. Our guy, the leatherback, has the exceptionally large head because it crunches on shells and crunches on carapaces of uh, lobsters and crabs. Uh, so it's got that big hard shell and the big hard uh, keratin on the jaws, the beak. The Olive Ridley uh, is facing extinction. And the Australian flatback uh, is also critically endangered. So in our area, loggerhead, Kemp's Ridley, Hawksbill, green, leatherback. On our coast nesting, just the leatherbacks. Uh, we know the Kemp's Ridley. We talked about Mexico. Baby Texas, starting to turn back. Leatherback, other coast, loggerhead here. Green and Hawksbill, south of here. Fibropapillomas are um, tumors that grow on our uh, turtles. They need to be removed. Uh, they are believed to be uh, related to uh, contamination. Uh, they're very common now. They're removed by lasers. At first, they were quarantining the uh, turtles, but it turns out that there's so many of them that they can't even keep up, so they only remove them when they become dangerous to their eyesight or movement. Uh, land tortoises are uh, very common. We have one that lives around here as well. The uh, gopher tortoise. There's our gopher tortoise. Uh, Glab, of course, tortoise is the largest, pictured in the picture before that. Uh, the gopher tortoise is our barrier island tortoise. We also get a diamondback terrapin and some box turtles and a few other, uh, and some, some aquatic turtles and estuaries. But there is our uh, tortoise, the gopher. The birds, the birds. Uh, we've done a lot of work with birds in this class. They're, they're, they're beautiful creatures. They do have a one-way breathing system and hollow bones, so for lightness. Uh, they have a keel, a notch on their breastbone that connects their large flight muscles and feathers, which are modified scales. This is a cool video on the PowerPoint. You can watch it. It's a bird learning how to fish. It's pretty cool. So we went through the groups of marine birds uh, on the pre-lab for the seabird sanctuary. Uh, the gulls and the pelicans are what we're interested in here. Uh, we're also got a lot of wading birds and shore birds and shore nesting birds and raptors. So these are just the strictly marine birds. There's so many different types of birds. Uh, the largest migration distance wise is by the uh, storm petrels. They circumnavigate the globe. So that's uh, their claim to fame. They sleep on the wing when they fly. They even sleep when they fly. Uh, pelicans and its relatives have that pouch. Frigate birds and uh, cormorants <clears throat> are in this group because they do have a huge throat pouch. The uh, upper left-hand corner is the blue-footed booby. Uh, Cool feet, make it to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> Spread wing postures, as we talked about. Uh, there's several reasons, drying feathers, 
thermal regulation, uh, display, the Anhinga up above, and the turkey vulture is the picture below. Uh, gulls and terns are very common. Uh, that's the laughing gull in mating plumage. It loses all that color and becomes kind of mottled and dull when it's not mating. Uh, they're small, very loud birds, but the gulls, terns, auks, and skimmers are all in this group. Puffins are found way north of here. Uh, they fly and then eat the, eat the, you know, they, they kind of look superficially like penguins, eat the sea, sea life. And then, of course, the penguins are southern species. They fly underwater. Very famous uh, southern species bird. Our wading birds, uh, we've seen a lot of them from the egrets and the herons, ibis, spoonbill, wood stork. Uh, we've classified them throughout the uh, class as well. Uh, the biggest threat to a lot of birds is they nest on the beach and people use the beach for recreation. So those are three common terns and then the uh, skimmer, you know, the royal turn, sandwich turn, least turn, skimmer. Uh, we also have the uh, oyster catcher pictured, a willet waiting, and then a, uh, whoo, escapes my mind. Uh, not the sandpipers. Well, it's just brain cramp. I apologize. So you can do your part by uh, using uh, that website and becoming a chick checker or working with conservation to help with the, uh, the uh, protection of these beautiful birds. Birds of prey are raptors. The uh, turkey vulture and the black vulture are what we get here uh, as far as the vultures go. And the osprey is our most common bird of prey. We also have the hawks and the uh, bald eagle. So what lives in our bay? The uh, reddish egret below, the uh, brown pelican above. Uh, the reddish egret kind of dances eats the crustaceans, the uh, brown pelican dives into the water, puffs up its chest and stuns its prey. Uh, the next group, the marine mammals. Marine mammals are air breathing, endothermic. Uh, they give live birth, feed from mammary glands with breast milk. There is a, a egg laying mammal. It's not a marine mammal. We do know the platypus. Uh, the cetacea, the carnivores, and the sirena are the three uh, groups of marine mammals that we uh, study taxonomically. Uh, cetacea is the first group, the whales. Uh, Mycetae and odontocetae. Uh, Mycetae is baleen, odontocetae is toothed whales. Uh, baleen whales filter bulk feed filter the water out with their baleen. Those are the great whales too, the, the largest creatures on earth. There's baleen on the left uh, and some of the uh, whales on the right, the large, large creatures. Uh, the gray whale there has those baleen, stiff baleen that uh, they gulp in the water and then they push out the water and strain it with the baleen and then swallow whatever they get. Uh, they do live in pods, they breach, and they communicate with song, whale songs. Odontocetes include the sperm, beluga, dolphins, porpoises. They're a little smaller. The sperm whale is the largest toothed carnivore though. Uh, the orca is the top consumer. Uh, they do have a single blowhole. Uh, most are smaller. Sperm whales, the, the largest. They vocalize as well. They use echolocation to hunt. Uh, 
There's the size of them compared to the great whales below. You can see the sperm whale is a smaller whale for the great whale, but uh, the great whales measure over 100 feet and the sperm whale, well, it does not top off at uh, anything more than 50 feet or so. Uh, whales do communicate and hunt using echolocation. They, they have this uh, melon on top of their head that uh, is used. That's why they have that, that bulging forehead. It's called a melon, a spermaceti organ in sperm whales. That's how they got their names. Uh, our local bottlenose dolphin, we occasionally get pygmy sperm whales, pilot whales. Uh, we don't get the great whales around here. Uh, that's more of the ocean where, where we, we get them. Uh, dolphins have a beak, porpoises, have a blunt snout and a smaller dorsal fluke. So dolphins and porpoises are different. Order Carnivora, Carnivora, pardon me, Carnivora, Carnivora. Uh, the pinnipeds, pinnipeds uh, diverge into earless seals and sea lions. The bull elephant seal can be 11,000 pounds. So they are huge, very aggressive. Uh, there's walrus on the left and a, uh, the elephant seals on the right battling over their uh, harem, the females. Fissipeds are the sea otters and polar bears. Uh, so they're new to the marine environment as far as evolutionary newcomers. Uh, so the polar bears spend most of their time on the sea ice and they're competent swimmers. They can swim uh, miles and miles. The sea otters uh, live in the um, kelp forests, the kelp forests. Uh, they don't have blubber, but they trap air in their fur, so their fur keeps them warm. And then sirena are the manatees and dugongs. Look, manatees have a paddle-like tail, dugongs have a forked tail. The largest uh, ever was the stellar sea cow, which is now extinct. Uh, so, sirena are herbaceous. They don't eat uh, meat. They only eat the uh, plants. Manatees and dugongs. Uh, they come from old epic tales of mermaids. Sirens are the mermaids that sang uh, music and lured sailors to their death. death. Uh, and that's how they get their uh, name because... Uh, they were probably mistaken for mermaids when they were first seen. Uh, the dugong is a uh, similar fork tail, fully marine, where manatees thrive in estuaries. Even freshwater, uh, there are manatees that are wholly freshwater. The stellar sea cow, like I said, was the largest. It was discovered by Europeans and hunted to extinction in a mere 27 years. So that is a shame. Uh, so that walks us through our higher vertebrae, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. We'll wrap up with a picture of uh, the West Indian manatee. That's our guy. Um, and uh, have a great day.